Okay, this is the test review for uh, test number three, bio nine, chapter seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Hopefully, this will record this time. So, we're doing chapter seven. Okay, chapter seven, we start on the nervous system. Neurons and synapses. You're going to need to know the, what the nervous system is divided into. Central and peripheral. You need to know the tissues, the, gli the supporting tissues, glial cells, astrocytes, things like that. Uh, you need to know the difference between the neurons in the CNS, the central nervous system, and the PNS. You're going to need to know the the structure of the nerves, the dendrites, the axons, what they do. They receive impulses, they conduct impulses. And dendrites, the axon helix, the direction of conduction, you know, going to need to know about the sheathing, uh, and again the direction of conduction, the nodes of Ranvier, the myelin sheath, uh, Schwann cells, ogliodendrocytes, how they're formed, where they're formed from know what an axon is, where it, what happens in an axon, where the poten action potentials are generated. The myelin sheath, uh, know what happens with the nodes of Ranvier. Classification of the neurons, sensory, receptor, motor, or interneurons. Somatic neurons or autonomic neurons. In the autonomic neurons, you're going to know about the sympathetic system or the parasympathetic system. The functional cat, uh, categories of the neurons, structural categories, pseudonodular, bipolar, multipolar. Uh, know the difference between a nerve and a tract, whether the mic, what mixed nerves are, the cranial nerves. Supporting cells, neuraglia, glial cells, what's found in the PNS, the Schwann sites, cells, the satellite cells. Know about the sheaths, the myelin sheaths. Ogliodendrocytes, microglia, astrocytes, ependymal cells. Now again, know about the myelin sheaths and what they do. The difference between the myelin sheaths in the brain and in the peripheral nervous system. Know how nerves regenerate. Uh, neurotrophin, the growth factors for nerves. Astrocytes. Have an idea of their functions. Uh, Need in the formation of synapses. We're going to get into the synapses, look at the blood, know what the blood brain barrier is and how it's formed. Know about the electrical activity in the, in the axons, the resting potential, minus 70. Know what hyperpolarization is or depolarization. Uh, know what the sodium-potassium pumps. Know the, the uh, ratio of the ions pumped in and out. How it affects permeability. Know about excitability or irritability. Uh, the gradient, the flow, when the channels open, what flows in, what flows out, why, by diffusion. Know about membrane potential, know when it's polarized, depolarized, repolarization, hyperpolarization. What happens in depolarization, what happens in hyperpolarization, excitory or inhibitory. Ion gates, what opens, what goes in, what goes out. Potassium goes out, sodium flows in, it depolarizes, it changes the membrane potential. The membrane resting membrane potential is about a minus 70, it goes up to about a minus 55, and then you have the ac action potential. Know about the gates, voltage gates, chemical gates, what a threshold is, what the threshold is.
know what an action potential is. Repolarization, what happens in repolarization? You know about the all or none. When it fires, it fires the same, the same amount of stimulus. Same amplitude. Recruitment, when more neurons are recruited to make a stronger stimulus. Refractory, everything's resetting. You have an absolute or relatively refractory. Cable properties, how the, con how the charge moves along the axon. Conduction of nerve impulses on an unmyelinated versus a myelinated axon or neuron. You know what the nodes of Ranvier do. Saltatory conduction. How the speed is regulated. The synapse. You know, you know about the synaptic cleft what the neuromuscular junctions are, what the junctions are called presynaptic, before the synapse, postsynaptic. Uh, whether it's axodendritic, axosomatic, axoaxonic, what type of synapse? Electrical synapse versus a chemical synapse. Neurotransmitters know about the synaptic vessels, know that calcium needs to be released as the uh, action potential comes out. Why is calcium released? Why do, what does it do? What, to, what about the, uh, what does it do to allow the vesicles with the neurotransmitters to be released? You know what the actions of the neurotransmitter uh, it's a ligand, it's a chemical transmitter, ligand-gated channels, they open channels, and the, what do the channels do? Graded potentials, uh, excited to know about excitatory postsynaptic potential or inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. Know about the newer neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, nicotinic, muscarinic, know uh, how they got their names, know about antagonists and agonists, how they work, how they help the neurotransmission or they inhibit the neurotransmission, know about chemically related channels, G proteins, secondary messengers, know about CAMP or calcium, about the nicotinic uh, receptors. I know about EPSPs, excitatory postsynaptic potentials. I know about G proteins. Alpha, gamma, what they do. We use them all through uh, the different types of senses. Cholinesterase, how it breaks down. Choline, acetylcholine, so no button. Somatic motor neurons, neuromuscular junctions, end plate, end plate potentials. Know what the drugs can do. Yeah, be familiar with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, some of the diseases that are uh, neuro-caused. Neuro, uh, Again, you have different regulators, uh, neurotransmitters, dopamine. What happens with dopamine and Parkinson's? Catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, in flight or flight. Uh, serotonin in the brain, memory, emotions, nitrogen.
nitric oxide, what does it do? Look at the CAMPs, the monamine action, second messengers. Cyclic AMP, serotonin, mood, appetite. How oh, uh, Prozac, Zola, Zoloft, you know, are used to, uh, to treat depression receptors. Dopamine, Niagara striatal system, Parkinson's disease, meso mesolimbic system, emotions. what dopamine does, know what epinephrine does, it's neurotransmitter and from the adrenal medulla. Glutamate we talked about uh, a little bit, don't worry too much about it. Glycine, know that it's there. GABA, this one you need to know about. Huntington's disease, what it does, it's inhibitory. Why is it inhibitory? Neuropeptides, you know, with the neuropeptides, you know about their, their par generally paracrine signaling, yeah. you know that they're there. Endogenous opioids, yes, no opioids. Uh, cannabinoids, know what they do, know what a retrograde transmitter does. nitric oxide, especially in the PNS, carbon monoxide we just touched on, ATP we just touched on, it's a co-transmitter. Know what divergence and convergence is, know what summation is, know synaptic plasticity, long-term potentiation. Inhibition, hyperpolarization, know what does it? Okay, that's chapter 7. Let's go to chapter 8. Hang on one second. Eight. Probably already open, which is why I can't open it again. Okay, Central Nervous System, Chapter 8. Know the difference between the central and the peripheral nervous system. It's composed of the brain and spinal cord, receives from the sensory inputs, directs the motor neuron and has interneural between the parts of the brain. Know the basic areas of the brain, know what a gyrus is, a sulcus is, corpus callosum that connects the brain, know that again the spinal cord, the central parts of the brain. How it's developed, neural tube, neural crest. Know the three different initial parts and how they break down and develop into other parts by week five. Know what a gyri is or a sulci. Uh, lobes of the cerebrum. Have an idea of what they are and what they do. Uh, Precentral, postcentral gyrus, frontal and parietal lobes. 
temporal occipital insula, insula very much in uh, temporal auditory, occipital vision, coordination, insula, olfaction, taste, hearing, pain, visceral responses. Mirror neurons, uh, I have an idea how they are in language and mimicky, uh, mimicking learning. Know the difference between the ways of looking at it. CT, EEG, PET scans, MRI. How you visualize the brain. Sleep. Know the different types of sleep and what, uh, how they're worked, how they're affected by the pineal gland, the melatonin, uh, how they affect learning, the ability to learn what happens during the different types of sleeps. REM and non-REM. Basal nuclei, know the difference between the gray and the white matter, where it's located in the CNS versus the PNS. Basal nuclei, motor, re motor regions, know about the gamma, GABA, excuse me, again, inhibitory. Cerebral lateralization. Contralateral, opposite sides. Know what crosses over. Know what happens if you have a stroke on one side or you have the brain split because of epilepsy. Know about aphasias. Know about Broca's area versus Wernicke's area. how they re, uh, affect speech and how they both are needed. Angular gyrus, sensory information, the ability to put uh, what you see, what you do together. Limbic system, you're looking at emotional, emotional rewards, memory, things like that. That involves in uh, part of the fight or flight, part of the memory. Uh, smell. Know how smell and taste and work with uh, your emotions. In limbic system, aggression, fear, hunger, satiety, sex, goal-directed, hypothalamus, amygdala, Amygdala, how uh, they're involved in the limbic, limbic system. Memory. Look at memory consolidation. How is memory uh, kept, learned? Look at the structural changes, the uh, dendrites, the formation of dendrites. Uh, know the difference between a somatic and episodic memory. have an idea of the different types of memory categories. Recurrent circuits, circular circuit in the brain for memory acquisition, long-term potential, synaptic changes in memory, dendritic spines, know that they grow in your long-term memory. It's actually a physical change in the brain. Again, we talked about retrograde messengers, endocannabinoids. Neurogenesis. Emotions in memory, how high emotional memories are there, stress, what happens in the hippocampus. Amygdala and hippocampus in memory and emotions. Cortisol may strengthen emotional memory. We'll talk about that, touch that when we get into the uh, into the hormones. 
not too worried about the brain memory. Uh, prefrontal cortex, lateral prefrontal uh, area. Know that it has to do with motivation, sexual, cognitive functions. Diencephalon, epithalamus, thalam, hypothalamus, thalamus, pituitary gland. Choreoid plexus produces CSF, pineal, melatonin, circadian rhythms, thalamus. Simosis sensory information goes through that. The hypothalamus, hunger, regulation of body temperature, regulation of sleep, sexual arousal, emotions, endocrine system. Lateral, medial, have an idea what these parts do. Know what ADH and the pituitary, ADH and oxytocin. Know about circadian rhythms and uh, pineal gland with melatonin. Superior, inferior colliculi in the various reflexes, visual and auditory, auditory excuse me. Substantia nigra with dopaminic effects, especially with Parkinson's disease. Hind brain, uh, respiratory senses, medulla oblongata, pon cerebral, cerebellum, excuse me, uh, from proprioral receptors, standing position, things like that, in the cerebellum. My encephalon know about the cranial nerves and the pyramids, pyramidal tracts. Medulla oblongata, vital sensors, respiration for sure, cardiac uh, control. RAS uh, for sleeping and awakefulness. Spinal cord tracks know the difference in the spinal cord for where the white and gray matter are. Descending and ascending tracks. The pyramidal and extra pyramidal tracks. about the spinal and versus cranial nerves. Know what a reflex arc is and why you might need one. Okay, that's chapter 8. Let's go to chapter 9. Okay, autonomic nervous system, not controlled, involuntary, cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, glands, somatic is controlled, autonomic is not. You have pre- and post-ganglionic neurons, you have ganglions that help control the, the sympathetic system and the automa part of the autonomic system. Uh, the organs will not atrophy. If it's cut, they'll continue to go, to continue to function at a certain level. So, and we're looking at the somatic, which is controllable. Autonomic, you cannot control. You have sympathetic and parasympathetic. We have preganglionic neurons and postganglionic neurons. The sim and the, the synapses in the ganglia are run parallel to the spinal cord. 
sympathetic, fight-or-flight, myelinated accents. The white ramy communicates go between the ganglions, so when one fires, they all tend to fire. Convergence and divergence we've talked about. Know the difference between myelinated and unmyelinated. Uh, collateral ganglia. Some of them go directly to their effector organs. Adrenal glands, adrenal, top of uh, kidney, uh, medulla cortex, know the difference, know what they produce. In the sympathetic, it's out of the medulla, adrenal medulla, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Parasympathetic, as opposed to fight or flight, it's rest and relaxation. Uh, it kind of it goes the opposite of the sympathetic. Uh, cranial nerves, you have nerves, uh, cranial nerves, glossopharyngeal vagus, slow down the heartbeat, dilate, uh, constrict the eyes. Again, do the opposite of what the of what the uh, sympathetic nervous system does. Know what the vagus nerve does. Sacral nerves, and this is all parasympathetic. I just have an idea what these do. Sympathetic, fight or flight, prepares the body to defend itself. Know what it does. Parasympathetic, rest and relaxation. Again, we talked about acetylcholine. Know about the neurotransmitters. Know about epinephrine and norepinephrine. How they do it as part of a neurotransmitter, how they're part of the hormonal system from the sympathetic nervous system. Varicosities, the movements of uh, the forming formation of synapse and passant, meaning when one fires they all fire. When your sympathetic system goes, most everything goes at the same time. Not the same with the parasympathetic system. When the sympathetic system fires, uh, you, the heart is affected, the liver, the blood vessels, the lungs, the pupils. Uh, response to androgenic stimulation as opposed to neural, neurogenic. Uh, neuro, this is your epinephrine coming out of the adrenal medulla for the most part. Alpha and beta androgenic. We saw that in chapter uh, 11 of the effects on the glucose. The type of al an alpha receptor versus a beta receptor. One uses cyclic AMP, the other uses calcium. You know how the receptors respond to cholinesterase, acetylcholine and or cholinesterase. Again, nicotinic and muscarinic receptors we talked about. There are other receptors we got didn't get into an ATP, but we did get into nitric oxide. Some organs are innervated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic, heart, digestive, pupil, you have cooperative, you have complementary effects, you have antagonistic effects. Androgenic hormones. Upregulation, a number of receptor sites. If it's the more is needed, it makes it more sensitive. Downregulation, if exposure is high, less receptor sites. Uh, to avoid desensitization, they might be. Uh,